it to Luke 19. You got that right. She said it's probably in Luke. Luke 19. Let's all stand as we honor uh, God's word. Luke 19. And I'm going to begin reading in the first verse. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was a chief among the publicans. And he was rich. Remember, a publican was a tax collector. And he sought to see Jesus, uh, who he was, and could not for the press because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and he came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him forth o foe. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the day. Thank you for the blessings of it. Thank you, Lord, for the time we've had together today, Lord. We just pray that you'll see if it be your will to bless us, Lord, and take care of us. Lord, we're thankful for those who have come out today. Pray you'll bless them, Lord. We pray for those who, for some reason or another, didn't come today. And, Lord, I just pray that you'll bless them also. And, Lord, I pray that you'll help us in everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. All right, a helpless tax collector. A helpless tax collector. You know, uh, why would Zacchaeus be helpless? He's a rich man, very rich. Why would he be helpless? Well, he found himself helpless. A tax collector in the day of Christ, while on the earth, was the most hated person of all people. They, they, they were hated people. Who, who remembers what the fellow was that went up to the temple to pray? He was a publican. He was a tax collector. And he went up to the temple to pray. And, and you wonder why he could so much as not look up why did he smote on his chest, uh, have mercy on me? Because he knew that he had done nothing. He had done nothing to earn what the Lord had given to him. And so Zacchaeus was the same way. When he got down here to the end of our text, Zacchaeus said, Lord, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna give half of my goods to the poor if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And he, he, Jesus didn't ask him to do that. He said, I want to do that after he met the Lord. So, so this was a tax collector here now. This was a man that wasn't used to those, those type of things. If he was the boss of all tax collectors, he was doubly hated. And Zacchaeus was. Zacchaeus was over all the tax collectors in that area. And, and he was a doubly hated man uh, the, uh, in that time. He used many afflicted means to collect taxes. Uh, they, if you study concerning those tax collectors, uh, they, they would, I mean, they'd beat people up. They'd have people, they call them ruffians. They would have ruffians that would go out and beat the people up to get the taxes out of them. And, and, and they would try to squeeze the taxes out of them and such. And if you'll remember, there was a tax collector that told Peter 
that Jesus hadn't paid his taxes. And, uh, and Peter went back to Christ and Peter said, uh, he said, you haven't paid your taxes. I'm just ad-libbing this now. I said, you haven't paid your taxes. And uh, I, know, I know that Jesus would have probably said to Peter, well, why were you even talking to him or something like that? And Jesus told him, he said, you tell him to go out. He said, you go out to the ocean and the first fish that sticks his head above the water, his tax money's in that fish's mouth. And he did that. He paid his taxes through that fish. Well, uh, those tax collectors, they were vicious people. And, and to think that uh, this man, you know, his children sing about Zacchaeus. And, and they, they sing about him in vacation Bible school. They sing about Zacchaeus. But yet Zacchaeus was a vicious in individual. And, and when it came to, he couldn't go to anybody and ask for help because they wouldn't give it to him. They hated him. They despised him. And so thereby uh, he came to, you just imagine that you were the most hated person in Vida and Lyons, Georgia. Just, just imagine that. If you're the most hated person. You know, I, uh, I, I've often said that Donald Trump is probably one of the most hated presidents, but they don't everybody hate him. But uh, a lot of them do. A lot of people do hate him. And, and such and so uh, but the thing about it is what if you were the most hated person and, and by day Georgia and you were you become a member of Landmark Baptist Church you came here and, and I preached to you and you saw who Jesus was and you wanted to be saved and 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 you say can you imagine the talk that people would have well I had that happen Coley Groves I've told y'all about him Cody Groves was one of the most hated men in, in Cynthiana, Kentucky. But he came to Calvary Baptist, and I preached to him, and the Lord saved him. And people from then on tell me, he said, do, do you have a man like that in your church? I said, I sure do. I had another man in the church up there, Brother Gene Watson. Brother Gene had been in prison for 17 years, and he got out of prison. When he got out of prison... I was sitting on his front porch talking to his wife and children. And some man got out up on it. They live way down in a gully. We call it a gully up there. They live way down in there. And, uh, and I was, somebody got out. Uh, the, the road was way above their house. And somebody got out of a car up there. And, and uh, I asked the lady. I didn't know him, But I asked the lady there. I said, who is that? She said, that's my husband. He got out of prison today. Well, you know, first thought went through my mind, you know. <laughs> Here I am sitting on a porch talking to his wife, and he just got out of prison. And, uh, but anyway, he walked down that road. He walked down that road and came down there, and he stood out. He didn't even come up on the porch. He stood out there, and I witnessed to him and told him about the Lord. And that night, the Camelites was having a tent meeting right over from his house. And he gathered his family up and he took them over there. And the Lord, he went forward and told them that he had trusted the Lord as his Savior and that he was saved. Well, they told him, they said, uh, you're not saved until you receive our baptism. And he said, oh, no. He said, I'm saved already. He said, I know I am. He said, said I, I, I don't need your baptism. And they said, well, you're not saved until you receive it. So what did he do? He looked up our church, and he came to Calvary, brought his family. He had about, I don't know, Rhonda knows how many kids. He had four or five kids. He brought them all to the church with him, his wife, and he came forward and trusted the Lord as his Savior there. Well, what, what was the talk of the city? I had people call me on the phone and said, you took, did you take that man into your church? Did you know he's an ex-convict? I said, I do. And I said, yes, we took him in. Well, it wasn't long until Brother Reggie, I let him start leading singing. And then the talk just up, we had people in the church there. They said, why are you letting him lead singing? I said, you know people don't like him. 
I said, well, I'm going to let him lead singing because we need a song leader, and he wants to do it. And uh, he led singing there. And, and, and so you see, these things happen. I, I told you all that to tell you this, that the, these things happen, that Jesus goes after sometimes the worst of the worst. Did he do that when he came after me? I think he did. You know, sometimes he goes after the worst of the worst. You might say, well, well, I'm not the worst of the worst. Well, all I can tell you is if you're not saved, then you better hope and pray he comes after you. But Jesus goes after the worst of the worst, and that's what he did here. <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, the most hated man in the country would be, he would be uh, alone and very unhappy. Well, this man existed in his day, and his name was Zacchaeus. Now, there was another tax collector who was saved. Who was he? There you go. I can read your lips. Matthew. Matthew was a tax collector. And Jesus went down. He was, he was, he was sitting at the gate collecting taxes. And Jesus went down and told him to give up all that and follow him. And immediately, the Bible says, he got down and he followed Jesus. Sometimes Jesus goes after the worst of them. Sometimes he goes after the worst of them. And this is something about Zacchaeus. Uh, Matthew, we don't have to turn there, but Matthew 9, 9 tells you about Matthew. Uh, and Matthew 10, 3 tells you that he was a, uh, that he was a tax collector, that he was a publican. So, uh, so we know that. But this man, Zacchaeus, had heard of a man of which he knew not. He had heard of Christ and of which uh, he was not very concerned about what Jesus did, but he was curious when he heard this man called Jesus was coming his way. He said, I want to see that man. I won't, I won't see him when he passes by. <clears throat> he, uh, he, like all others around, wanted to see this man. Little did he know that this man was coming to see him. Now think about that for just a moment. He was a helpless man in a whole community. He had money, he had power, he had everything. But yet he was a helpless person. Little did he know that Jesus was coming to see him. But he was. Zacchaeus had one problem. He was very short in nature, in stature. He could not see over the others who were much taller than he. What did he do? He climbed in a sycamore tree and waited for Jesus to pass. That's all he was doing. He was sitting up there on that limb, waiting on Jesus to pass. He never thought that anything like this was going to happen to him. He didn't, he didn't, know, he didn't know anything like this was going to happen. So if, if we're to understand the helpless tax collector, we must see he did not know that he was helpless. A man that had rich, very rich, rich in land, rich in possessions, rich in everything. Do you think that he was helpless? He sure was. You might say, well, I got enough money to do me. But are you helpless? Are you helpless when... Somebody in your family's dying and you can't do anything about it? Are you helpless? Or let me better say, when you're on your deathbed, will you find yourself helpless? Sure you will. There's, a, there's, a, there's times in all of our lives that, that we have helpless moments when we can't do anything about it. Can't do a thing about it. He had, he had everything any man could ask for. He had power. He had wealth. He had servants. And he had the tiger by the tail. And he was going through life. And he was, he, was, he, he was satisfied with that. He would go to his mansion, which probably was surrounded by tall fences. because They were hated people, tall walls. But he would go to his mansion and, and he, would, he would settle down with the fact 
but he was okay with that if everybody hated him. What more could he want but only to see this man that everybody talked about? Now think about that for a moment. He heard through the conversation of the people that was coming through the gate and he was collecting the taxes, he heard them talk about this man called Jesus coming his way. He wanted to see him. He'd heard about him. He wanted to see him. Now, he did not go to see the Savior, but the man who fed 5,000 with five loaves and two fishes just a day or so before that. That's who he wanted to see. He wanted to see this man who they talked about that fed 5,000 people with two, with, with, uh, with, with uh, five loaves and two small fishes. He wanted to see this man. He wanted to say, what, what kind of man is this that can do something like that? I can take my money and I can buy that. I can buy, I can buy all the food I want. But let me see a man who fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two small fishes. He wanted to see that man. That's the man he wanted to see. He needed nothing from Christ. He needed nothing from Christ. He didn't go there to, he didn't, it's just like you come to Landmark Baptist Church, you know, just like I think of, as I was preparing this message, I thought of um, uh, the brother that was walking down the road here. And he came in here and the Lord saved him while he was here. He just said that he was walking down there and he said something just caused him to want to come in here. And he came in here and the Lord saved him. He wasn't expecting that. I mean, he came here, a man dying of cancer, and he left here happy. Y'all remembering when he got up there? You know, he just, he, he, he couldn't believe it. He could not believe it that, that the Lord had saved him. And when Brother Kendall and I went to see him in the hospital in Savannah. And he sat up in the middle of bed and he started you know, like this. And, and I said, why are you hitting your chest? He said, I'm glad the Lord put this in my head, lung cancer. He said, I'm glad the Lord put this in my chest. He said, if the Lord hadn't put this in my chest, he said, I wouldn't have been to church. And he said, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have been saved. You know, I could have told him he would have been anyway, but uh, they, they, the Lord would have made a situation. I'm just glad he made it here. So, you know, Zacchaeus wasn't expecting that. He needed nothing. He needed absolutely nothing. Well, if we're to understand this helpless tax collector, we must see how Jesus approached him. He, didn't, he had no intentions of approaching Jesus. He just wanted to see him pass by. He wanted to sit up on that limb and watch him pass by. Zacchaeus had fame. Wanted to see another who also had fame. Christ had fame. He had fame. And he wanted to see another. Even though his fame was not very good. He's the most hated man around. But he had, Jesus had fame because people had talked about the miracles that he had performed and such. <clears throat> uh, little did he know, did he expect this man called Jesus knew who he was. Verse 5, he says, Zacchaeus, come down out of that tree. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Zacchaeus, come down out of that tree. Today I want to go to your house. Did all them people stand around like that? No. No. Verse 7 says, And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. We don't want to do with him. This man is going to this man's house. Nobody would go to this man's house. This man, the, the, the Jesus was going to his house. 
This is like Rhonda and I, now we've never done it, so I want you to understand that. This is like Rhonda and I going to an Elvis Presley concert. And Elvis looked out in the crowd and said, Rhonda Jackson, I'm going to be come to your house. Well, she would have fainted. So she thought a lot of Elvis Presley. That's the way it was. I bet you guys, Rhonda, right now, would she gone? She said, yes, sir, I'd, have, I'd had him over. I'd cooked him one of the best meals he ever had, knowing that she don't cook for me. <laughs> yeah, she does. I'm not, she told me quit saying that. But Zacchaeus just couldn't, couldn't understand it. Why this man was coming to his house. The people couldn't understand. Why was this man going to his house? You, you think Jesus did not go that way just to find Zacchaeus? He went that way because the very last statement here said, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save them which was lost. Winston, you got on a sign out there. You got uh, seat before fine, I believe it is. You need you need change those. You need to put seek first. Lord seeks and then he finds. Then he comes. Now, if we're to understand this helpless tax collector, we must see the tax collector's repentance. He immediately he knew. You know, we, we think about well, what, what makes us repent. Look at verses 6 through 8. And just as soon as Jesus said, I'm going to your house, he, he would normally said, he would normally said, uh, no, you, you're not going. You, you're not coming to my house. Cause, you know, nobody comes to my house. And, when, and he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be guest with the man that was a sinner. And then Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord. Now, he called him Lord. You think he would have called him Lord when he was sitting up on that limb waiting on him to come by? He never did call him Lord. Now all of a sudden he calls him Lord. What happened to Zacchaeus? What happened to him? Just like the wind blows, he was born again. You see, we, we get this thing to where, you know, we say we get people in church, you get them here for a few months or anything, maybe they'll be saved. That's not always the case. Sometimes the case is you'll have people come and come and come and come and never be saved. And I just thought about that when some lady passed away here not too long ago that came to this church pretty faithful for a while. But she never would move. But they just buried her some time back. That kiss, immediately he came down. He said, Behold, Lord. Is Jesus your Lord and your Savior? Is Jesus Lord over your life? He realized right from that very moment something changed in him and he realized that this Jesus was the Lord of his life. So he said, Lord, these other things didn't mean nothing to him. These other things didn't mean nothing to him. I've had people say over the years, they'll say, well, if I, if I, if I quote, unquote, get saved, then I'll have to give up too much. All of a sudden, all those other things didn't mean nothing to him. He said, I'm willing to give half of it to the poor. And he said, what I've got left, if I've cheated any man out of anything, can you imagine the people that lined up and, to get some of their tax money back. I believe he gave every bit of it away. He 
Can you imagine that? The people who hated this tax collector was amazed that anyone would want to go home with him. As I said, Jack Zacchaeus, all of a sudden, he called him Lord. He said, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. Jesus never said anything to him about giving his goods away. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, and they probably did, I restore him fourfold. I told you they had ruffians that would beat people up, take money away from them. I mean, that was, that was, that's, that's where a tax collector was. But Jesus was going home with one of them. All of a sudden, this tax collector realized his great sins, and he repented of them. He repented of them. Some people may say, well, uh, uh, you have to go through this, go through that. Our means will tell you, you got to do this, got to do that. You got to come and you got to walk the church aisle. You got to do all this. Zacchaeus didn't do all that. He just came down off that limb when Jesus said, come down here. I'm going home with you. He realized right then that the Bible says that he came down joyfully. He received him joyfully. He received him happy. He, he had no expectation of that. What changes people on that? What changes a man like that? The new birth. The new birth. I wrote about it. That's the reason I, I didn't write about it. I copied and, and but in, in the, in the uh, bulletin today. I did change something around because it was written in Old English and I changed some of it around where it better understood. But that's, that is, that's talking about, you know, that all of a sudden, just like the wind blows through, that's a new birth. That's a new birth. Regeneration is a new birth. He was regenerated just like that. I remember Brother Joe Wilson, somebody, we, I was at a Bible conference, preaching a Bible conference. Brother Joe Wilson was there too. And some man got up and he said, uh, it took the Lord six weeks to save me. And Brother Joe Wilson stood up and said, you're still not saved. He said, it don't take the Lord six weeks to save anybody. And the guy, guy said, oh, Brother Joe, I run from the Lord. He said, you can't run from God. He said, you may think you can, but you can't. He said, God didn't let you run loose for six months or six weeks or whatever it was before he saved you. Well, you see, that's what people think. They don't realize when, when that new birth comes up on you, it's just like that. It's just like that. I know it was that way with me. And I want to ask you before I close, do you realize your great sin which haunts your conscience every day. Zacchaeus was a sick man in the conscience. His conscience bothered him every day. How many people did he beat up the day, the day right there when Christ, how many people did he have beaten up the day when Christ came? His sins was haunting him. That's what happens when the Lord saves you. His sins begin to haunt you. And they haunt you. And you realize the only, only way out of this thing is to repent of them. And he repented. He repented of them. All right, let's form a circle and let's have prayer.